Welcome uh, to our very first Jamf uh, Pro Support Series webinar. This is a new series of webinars that we're looking to do geared towards current customers, going into a deeper set of tools and features regarding our product, uh, the Jamf Pro, and as well as you know, associated technologies in the Apple ecosystem. So today we're focusing on specifically technology relating to Apple education, things like Apple School Manager, DEP, uh, these wonderful features that are enabling education institutions to do some amazing things with Apple products. Uh, they're pretty awesome, but they're also very complex. And we're hoping today to simplify some of those things for you and allow many of you to ask questions that you may have had for quite some time. Presenting today will be two of our education technical account managers, Matt Abley and Tyrone Ludke. Both of them have been working with both education customers like yourselves and our product for quite some time now. Uh, I'm going to give each of them a moment to kind of speak so you know who their voices are. Matt, why don't you uh, go first? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, looking forward to the opportunity to share some of the stuff that we've learned and hopefully get your integrations going a lot smoother. All right, and Tyrone, why don't you do the same? Good afternoon from me as well. All right, thank you. Uh, for a note regarding the WebEx system, as you have questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A section. We will have a portion of time after the 20 to 30 minute presentation where we do just Q&A. So we will do our best to get through as many of those questions that you guys have in there at that point in time. I will be, uh, and actually I realized I did not introduce myself. Uh, I am Ben Michael, the manager of customer success, not pictured there, but this is this, this first voice that's been introducing the podcast, excuse me, the webinar. And I will be kind of keeping track of those Q&A questions to kind of make sure we stay on track for the, that portion at the end. Um, of course, as well, we are recording this webinar, so we will have a copy of it. If for whatever reason you have to drop out or if you have uh, friends or colleagues that we're hoping to attend, we'll make sure that they're able to see the um, primary portion of this. So uh, Matt and Tyrone, why don't you take it away? Thanks, Ben. So just to give you all, here's a brief overview of the topics that we'll be discussing today. First, we'll take an overview look at Apple School Manager and where things are in the Apple School Manager portal. We'll then go into user creation in Apple School Manager and the points of emphasis that's going to make importing of information into Jamf Pro a lot smoother. Then we'll look at how we sync and import that information from Apple School Manager into Jamf Pro. Another subject we'll go into will be Apple's Classroom app and how we can deploy that from Jamf Pro both with and without the use of Apple School Manager. And then, like Ben said, we will have some time at the end for Q&A. Um, so there's going to be a lot of in-depth content on this, so we'll, we'll try and take some pauses to let everybody digest all the information. And again, you know, this, this webinar will be sent out to, to the attendees for viewing later. So before we go into the migration to Apple School Manager and the overview, let's first take a moment to compare and contrast Apple School Manager from DEP. The DEP portal is used for the assignment and unassignment of devices for your organization. The Apple School Manager portal has a lot more features to it. In that portal, you can create users and classes for your organization. You can also assign roles to users to create additional managers or even additional VPP accounts. There's also an area just like the DEP portal where you can assign and unassign devices for your organization. Essentially, your DEP account would now reside in Apple School Manager after the migration. That migration of your DEP account takes place automatically and should not break communication with your DEP token already in Jamf Pro. So let's talk about the migration process, since there's probably some of you out there that have yet to migrate. Uh, if you have not migrated over from deploy.apple.com yet, you'll want to work with Apple to make sure everything's migrated over properly. If you have multiple organizations with multiple VPP accounts, all of those accounts should be moved into a single organization before migrating. AppleCare will do that transferring of those accounts for you. And linked here is Apple's KB article regarding this migration process. If you have a legacy account, which is a VPP account created before the DEP program, work with Apple on setting up an organization in DEP 
and getting that VPP account moved under this new account. After that's complete, you can then migrate to Apple School Manager. Also, if you're looking at integrating Apple School Manager with an SIS solution, you'd want to check with Apple about the compatibility with your SIS or the possibility of setting up an export from your SIS that would work with the CSV uploads if your SIS is currently not supported. So after logging into Apple School Manager, the sidebar here is going to show three main areas. First is the people section, and this is where you create the classes and individuals. The individuals that are created will get a managed Apple ID associated with them, and those same individuals can be added into classes in Apple School Manager. Second is the devices section, and this section is going to look familiar to the old DEP portal. This is where your DEP tokens reside, along with being able to assign DEP devices to your tokens. And third is the content section. So right now this is just used for a redirect to the VPP portal and to iTunes U. So the question on a lot of admins' minds are, why do we need managed Apple IDs and what are the uses for the managed Apple IDs? And this is really a list of all the main reasons we could come up with for, for why we would need a managed Apple ID. First, in order to use Apple's shared iPad feature, you must log into that device with a managed Apple ID. We also need managed Apple IDs to create Apple IDs for students under 13 now that Apple no longer has that program. You can also use managed Apple IDs for automatically accepting VPP invitations for those users so long as the VPP account was migrated over during the migration to Apple School Manager. If your VPP account wasn't migrated over and you'd still like to use the auto accepting feature, you could create a content manager in Apple School Manager and that would be the VPP account that would then allow the auto accepting of the VPP invitation. Also, we want to create managed Apple IDs if we're creating classes in Apple School Manager and that's something that we'll go over shortly with the Apple Classroom workflows. Some admins also like managed Apple IDs for the ability to reset passwords for students and the fact that they're non-commerce accounts and can't purchase items from iTunes. So when users are created in Apple School Manager, again, a managed Apple ID is also created for the user. It's important to make sure the managed Apple IDs that you're creating are not already existing Apple IDs. You're unable to create a managed Apple ID that's already an existing Apple ID. In order to prevent this, Apple supplies the Apple ID subdomain tag that you can use on your managed Apple ID since that should not be currently used for any existing Apple ID. Another big point of emphasis would be to keep the naming convention the same as you already have set up. If you have users in Jamf Pro already, or if you're using LDAP, it's going to make your life much easier if we keep that naming convention the same. If your LDAP users or existing Jamf Pro users have usernames of first name, last name, you'll want the managed Apple ID to reflect that same naming. And this is going to come into play when we set up the matching criteria for the import into Jamf Pro. And by far, this is one of the most important things to think about uh, if you're at that stage of setting up users in Apple School Manager. So now Ty is going to go ahead and walk through how Apple School Manager communicates with Jamf Pro. Thanks, Matt. As a side note, before we get into integrating with Apple School Manager uh, with Jamf Pro, now that the DEP token resides in Apple School Manager, many customers are curious where to renew this DEP token. Uh, if you click into MDM servers on the left side, and then click into your MDM server token that needs renewing, there's an option there to generate a new token. This token can then be added into Jamf Pro to renew that DEP token. Now we'll go ahead and jump into the integration of Apple School Manager with Jamf Pro. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be taking a look at how Jamf Pro syncs with Apple School Manager. We'll also take a look at the syncing settings in Jamf Pro, including setting up the matching criteria for the import to prevent duplicate users, 
and then the importing of the class and user information after syncing. Apple School Manager syncing with Jamf Pro takes place over a DEP token, which we'll go over in the upcoming steps. Uh, one of our recommendations is to create a new DEP token in Apple School Manager for the individuals and classes syncing. This way you don't have your DEP devices, uh, or excuse me, that your DEP devices are on a separate token and that we just have one token that's used for the users and classes syncing. To create this empty DEP token, you would click on Add MDM Server option in the bottom right of the MDM Server section. This then brings up a screen for the display name and a place to upload the public key that we collect from Jamf Pro. After clicking Save MDM Server, a dialog box comes up for you to download your server token, which is what you'll upload to Jamf Pro for syncing. Now that you have an empty DEP token that's going to be used for syncing users and class information, you need to upload that token into Jamf Pro and set up the sync. Since this is a DEP token, uh, it'll be uploaded in Settings, then Global Management, then Device Enrollment Program. In here, you'll just set a uh, display name for the token. We recommend using something with Apple School Manager in the name, so that way you know that this is the token you're using for the sync with Apple School Manager. You will, then set up, you will then click the Upload Server Token File button and upload that token that you received from Apple School Manager earlier. After the upload, this will look identical to any other DEP token you've uploaded into Jamf Pro. Uh, after making sure you hit Save here, you'll go into Settings, Mobile Device Management, Apple Education Support, and then the Apple School Manager tab. And this will be where the uh, syncing settings are set up. After clicking the add, the next screen brought up has all the syncing settings shown here. There's a few things to touch on with this page, so Matt will dig into these uh, settings individually. Thanks, Ty. So the first sync setting here is just a display name for your Apple School Manager instance in Jamf Pro. And this can be whatever you would like it to be. Under that is the DEP instance that we're using to sync information from Apple School Manager. You'll select the token that was designated as the Apple School Manager token. Next setting is sync time. Depending on how frequently the class schedule changes is really the basis for the syncing time. If at any time you want to force a sync, you will have that capability. A good recommendation for the sync time is to stagger this from your log flushing and your nightly database backups since we don't want MySQL to get a lot of different requests at the same time. Another thing to note is that since Apple Classroom is based off of proximity and not time, you can have all the classes uploaded at the same time. This would then prevent that EDU profile from being sent out after every syncing change to classes. And we'll go over that EDU profile here in a little bit. Last setting here is by far the most important. This matching criteria is used to match imported Apple School Manager users to existing users in Jamf Pro. This is also used after the fact if you're bringing in LDAP users after importing your Apple School Manager users. And this is a critical setting to make sure you don't bring in duplicate users into Jamf Pro. This is also the reason why having the naming convention be the same with your managed Apple IDs will make this step much easier. If your naming convention is the same throughout, the matching criteria shown here is the one that we've had the most success with. And let's go ahead and dig into some of the matching criteria so you can get a sense of what each option is looking for. First matching criteria of Managed Apple ID contains username JSS is one of the more popular ones if the naming convention is the same throughout the Managed Apple ID creation. You can see in the example that we kept the naming convention with our managed Apple IDs, so john.do at appleid.jamf.com will match up with the current Jamf Pro user of John Doe. 
a way to help you know if the matching criteria will work is to plug in the values for each of the criteria and read it out. In this scenario, we would read that john.do at appleid.jamf.com contains john.do, which is true. If the criteria were switched, it would be username JSS contains managed Apple ID, which would read as john.do contains john.do at appleid.jamf.com, which is not entirely true. Same goes for the next example where we're looking for the managed Apple ID to contain the email of the user in Jamf Pro. Where things get a little tricky is when the naming convention is not the same with the managed Apple ID and another method of matching must be made. This is where the source system identifier comes into play. The source system identifier is the person number in Apple School Manager. In order to match with the person number, a user extension attribute will need to be made in Jamf Pro and that information needs to be filled out for each user. In this example, we made an extension attribute called ID number. After a user has that extension attribute filled out, the matching will then look at the extension attribute and the person number of the user. Since this is matching numbers to numbers, you can use the equals operator so you don't get a ton of possible matches. Some admins are curious as to the order of operations for importing Apple School Manager users and importing LDAP users through enrollment in Jamf Pro. If the matching criteria of the usernames is solid, the order of how users are imported into Jamf Pro doesn't matter. If LDAP users are in Jamf Pro first and you're importing Apple School Manager users, the matching criteria will be used to potentially match the Apple School Manager users to the existing Jamf Pro users. If Apple School Manager users are in Jamf Pro first and you want to enroll devices with LDAP authentication, the matching will happen automatically when those users are brought in through the enrollment. If you're at a point where you have to use the source system identifier for matching, you have only one direction this is going to work. Those users from LDAP will need to be imported into Jamf Pro prior to the Apple School Manager users being imported. You won't be able to attach an extension attribute to users that are not yet in Jamf Pro. So now Ty is going to go ahead and walk through the importing of users and classes into Jamf Pro. Thanks again, Matt. To start, the, to start importing users, you're first going to go to the Users tab and perform a blank search. After the search completes, an Import button will show at the top of the results. After clicking import, the next screen will come up and ask you if you want all your users in Apple School Manager imported or just a subset of those users. I'd like to note that users that have been flagged as inactive in Apple School Manager will still be imported if you select to import all your users. Since Apple doesn't pass the value for the status of the user, Jamf Pro um, will read in all the users regardless of them being active or inactive. For this example, we're going to just bring in the users from our reading list. The next screen will show users already in Jamf Pro that triggered the matching criteria. Jamf Pro will also make note at the top of the screen uh, of the matching criteria that's being used. Uh, here we can see that the criteria used was managed Apple ID contains username JSS. After looking through the list and verifying that the correct users are matched, we'll go ahead and click uh, go or click next to go to the review screen. This review screen shows the number of new users being imported, the number of users being matched, and the number of users that have already been imported. If things do not look right on this screen, you don't have to continue. If you were supposed to get some users to match and they didn't, uh, you can cancel out of here and visit the matching criteria, or excuse me, revisit the matching criteria. This is the last chance to look things over and make sure that they look right before you import your users. If everything looks right, you can hit next and the import will take place. We'll now see a screen stating that the import is complete and those Apple School managers are now imported as new users or matched to existing users. When these users are imported or matched, you now have the roster information for the users that includes their managed Apple IDs. To verify, you can search for a user and click into their user record. 
Now here in a user record, we can see that the roster information and the managed Apple ID for this user has been populated. Another thing to note is that we should, be we should not be manually editing the roster information for the users. Uh, this could cause issues with the import and matching and lead to duplicate users. To import your classes from Apple School Manager into Jamf Pro, you'll navigate to Mobile Devices, then classes. Here you'll see the button at the top to start the import process. After clicking the import button, you're brought to a list of classes available for import. If a class has already been imported, it will not show up here, meaning you can choose to import a couple classes at a time and you don't have to keep track of what's already been imported. To select all the classes at once, you can click the empty checkbox on the top left. After your classes are selected, you'll click the next button at the bottom. This brings us to a report of the classes and users that'll be imported. You'll see in this case, our users are existing users because we imported them in the previous step. If you had not already imported these users, they would show as new or updated users. Review this report for errors and click next if everything looks right. Again, do not continue if something looks incorrect as mistakes made during this import process can be difficult to resolve after the fact. After clicking next, we'll be brought to a loading screen. Currently, this bar continues to animate as, as, as long as it states import complete, uh, we can click the done button. After clicking done, you'll be brought back to the list of classes now available in Jamf Pro. Another common question brought up is when are the users imported into Jamf Pro? Does this happen during the sync or do we have to run the import after the sync? To explain that, an Apple School Manager sync in Jamf Pro brings the roster information into the database for reference. The import is which, what actually makes the connections in the database to have those users and classes show in Jamf Pro. The only way that a user is automatically imported is when we have a class that is already imported into Jamf Pro, and then we add a new user to the class in Apple School Manager. The next time Jamf Pro syncs with Apple School Manager, that new user will automatically import uh, into Jamf Pro, and a new user or matched user will be created based on the matching criteria. If you were looking to add classes or students into Jamf Pro, you would still need to import those after the sync. Now that we have classes and users imported into Jamf Pro, we'll make the transition into Apple Classroom app and how Jamf Pro plays into this setup. Since an MDM provider is required to use Classroom, uh, we need to make sure that the EDU profile is deployed to all of the devices in the class, including the teachers. If you were to open Classroom straight out of the App Store, you would you'd be greeted by this message here on the screen that says, we need to have an EDU configuration profile in order to use Classroom. Uh, Jamf Pro automatically takes care of deploying that EDU profile, and we'll go through the steps for Jamf Pro to produce and deploy the EDU profile. To use Classroom, we first need to enable Apple Education Support in Jamf Pro. This can be done by navigating to Management Settings, then Mobile Device Management, then Apple Education Support. Here you'll click the Edit button, check the box next to Enable Ad Apple Education Support, and then you'll click the Save button. Keep in mind that checking this box will send an EDU configuration profile to every device or user that's assigned to a class. 
This means that it's important to make sure the devices in a class are on at least iOS 9.3 to support that EDU profile. Once this is saved, you should see the devices are getting the command to install the EDU configuration profile. And then once this profile has been completed, the devices should be accessible via Classroom. If you don't see this profile going to a device, check to make sure the user that's associated with the device is scoped within a class that's in Jamf Pro. Now that we've discussed the Jamf Pro and Classroom integration, uh, Matt's going to go over some of the different deployment workflows. All right, so it is important to make note that Apple School Manager is not required to use Classroom. Uh, Apple School Manager is a good way to create classes for use with Classroom, but we'll take a look at other ways of deploying Classroom without the use of Apple School Manager. There are some differences to the deployment when using Apple School Manager and also when looking at using Apple's shared iPad. So this flowchart is a lot to take in at once, but we'll briefly go over the different deployment methods and the key differences between them all. So for the first scenario, we're going to use managed Apple ID users in the class and also shared iPads. We first want to make sure that the Apple School Manager classes and users are created and imported into Jamf Pro. The big difference when using shared iPads is that a mobile device group must be scoped in the class instead of the student users. This is the only way that an EDU profile is deployed to shared iPads, so you may need to create a mobile device group for these specific classes shared iPads and then have those groups scoped in the class. Since the teacher device is not a shared iPad, you will still scope that teacher user to the class to get the EDU profile. Now what if we're using managed Apple ID users in our classes, but we're not using shared iPads? And the big difference would be that the device group would not need to be in the class, but the users need to be attached to devices in Jamf Pro and scoped to the classes. Now let's look at scenarios where we're not using users from Apple School Manager. Well, what if we still want to create our classes in Apple School Manager? And that's not really a recommended workflow with Jamf Pro. So when your classes are synced, any students or teachers that were manually scoped to the class in Jamf Pro are going to be overwritten during the sync. So if you're looking at creating classes in Apple School Manager, you should probably go and also create those managed Apple ID users. Now, if we're not using any classes from Apple School Manager, we do have the option of using the SIS Importer plugin to upload class info directly into Jamf Pro. And this is going to automatically scope the students and teachers to the class, much like the Apple School Manager import. If we're not using the SIS Importer, we can still manually create classes in Jamf Pro and make sure we scope teachers and students to those classes. So what it all boils down to is that all non-shared iPad devices need to have users attached to the devices in Jamf Pro. And this can either happen manually with a script or through pre-stage enrollment with LDAP authentication. After everything is set up on that end, we still need to make sure that the EDU profile was deployed out to the devices. We also want to make sure that both the student and teacher devices have Bluetooth turned on, that they're on the same wireless network or subnet. If all this looks good, hey, then the classroom app should be ready to go. So this actually concludes our presentation for new Apple Education Technologies. I know it's definitely a lot to take in, but again, this webinar is going to be sent out to all our attendees for review here. Um, so we'd definitely like to thank you for joining us for our Jamf Pro Support Series webinar. 
So Wonderful. Ben, oh, sorry, Matt, I interrupted yeah, you. There. No, that's fine. Ben's been going through the questions, so we'll we'll see if we can get to as many as we can here. Yes, yes. Thank you all for submitting questions. Feel free to continue to do so. Uh, I'm going to do my best to kind of articulate them as well as I possibly can, and then uh, I'll give the guys a chance to to respond, and you know maybe I'll even take a stab at one or two. <laughs> Uh, we'll start off with Ruben's question uh, regarding uh, integrations with different SIS types, uh, specifically PowerSchool. I'm not sure if we have that information, Ruben. Um, guys, I don't know if you have anything to speak to that. Uh, so right now it's kind of iffy as to when other SIS importers are going to be integrated with Apple School Manager. What I would do, honestly, is see if PowerSchool has worked on setting up ways of exporting information for the six CSV templates that you need, and then just do your importing that way. Some of the, some of the SISs are actually working backwards for Apple School Manager, so that way they're not waiting for Apple School Manager to integrate with them, so that way they, they can do it that way. Cool. Uh, thanks, guys. So... Regarding, we're, we're going to skip up here to um, Alan's question. He's talking about after adding in the new Apple School Manager DEP instance in Jamf Pro, does he need to be deleting the one that he previously had in his Jamf Pro instance? No. Nope. So the one that you previously had in your Jamf Pro instance is more than likely the one that you have all your DEP devices on, and you just you leave that one alone. Essentially what we're doing is, creating a new DEP token that's just going to be used for class and student syncing information. Uh, your other one can just be left as is. And, and also, I, I did forget to mention this, but if that's your only other DEP account on there, be sure to just set that as your default DEP server. Uh, that way, any additional devices you purchase are, are going to be automatically tagged onto the one that, that your device is already in. All right. So uh, additionally, you know, kind of, um, excuse me, guys, sorry, just articulating my question here. So we also had a question from Jen regarding, you know, how the kind of difference between managing the device and managing the users. It's kind of a fine line that I think is sometimes hard for, for people to understand. Could you guys, if at your best possible way, articulate the difference between managing a device in Jamf Pro versus managing kind of a user record? Does that question make sense how I explained it? You got that? It's a tougher one, I know. Yeah, yeah. so really the whole thing about, uh, the, and I would assume you said this is all in Jamf Pro, right? Correct, this yeah. is all in Jamf Pro. So really your users, the way, the reason that you would need users in Jamf Pro are if you're going to use user-based VPP or if you're going to use Classroom with without shared iPads. So essentially your users in there are just used to be attached to your devices. So uh, Jamf Pro needs to know where to send this EDU profile. Um, so really that's, that's your user management in the JSS is just having a record of, of a user to the device and where that EDU profile is being deployed, if that kind of answers that user question on it. Yeah, that's a tougher one. Um, you know, it, as there's a few other questions in here we, we had that were very relevant questions that didn't fully align with the, the session we're talking about. I'm going to bring those ones offline and we'll make sure we get those ones answered. But for the time being, I'm going to try and get through as many questions relating to, to the content that we were describing here today. So Dan had a question as he had a little bit more information on the background, but the base of it was that will we be able to assign apps to classes at some point without uh, having to go through some custom scripting using Active Directory? We hope so. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it would definitely be, it is definitely a highly sought after feature request. Okay, wonderful. So Lori asked, uh, you know, is LDAP the same as Active Directory? And this is one I think I actually wouldn't mind taking. So LDAP is a generic term for all different types of directory services. It's kind of the agnostic brand list term, uh, lightweight directory access protocol, if you look it up on Google. And Active Directory, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, is Microsoft specific version mm -hmm. of that directory service type. Correct. So uh, that's kind of a delineation there. It's, it's kind of like, you know, facial tissues and Kleenex. So Matthew asks, if you already have multiple, devi multiple device DEP accounts, uh, are we also recommending multiple user slash class MDM servers be created? 
Uh, you can actually only have, from Apple School Manager, you only can have one of your DEP tokens be your Apple School Manager token. So what we're actually recommending is to create, in Apple School Manager, create a empty uh, DEP token. So there's no devices on that token and use that for your Apple School Manager uh, syncing. And that way, if you have to troubleshoot anything with Apple School Manager, or if, you, or if you have to troubleshoot anything with DEP devices, you don't have to worry about over uh, taking over one of those other tokens or messing with those. So to also add on to that, uh, that is something that we do have as a feature request out there. I know there are some school districts out there that want to more granularly have their Apple School Manager tokens in Jamf Pro. So they want to have more than one. And I, I know that's a feature request out there. Cool. Uh, we'll jump to Nate's question then. He asks, so the workflow is to do everything with users and classes in Apple School Manager and then import it into Jamf Pro? Correct. That's, that's the ideal best case scenario workflow. Mm -hmm. It's just, it just works. Everything's flawless. It's easy on your side. There's, there's other ways to do it if you've already had things set up, and I'd recommend reaching out to uh, support if you, have, if you have something else already set up. Uh, they'll most likely contact us if it gets to be complicated. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, that's going to be the best way to do it. Great. So, so we had a few questions regarding classes specifically. Uh, Jen asked, you know, where does a list of classes in Jamf Pro come from? Is that some sort of import or, or where does that, how does that get populated? So if we are bringing in this class information from Apple School Manager, that actually happens when we have our sync, that information is brought into the database. Then when we do our import, we're actually reading out that information, making the connections in the database to then show in a list in Jamf Pro. Cool. And I think a uh, follow-up to that is Joel's question about if uh, when they're initially importing the classes, uh, he likes to use the section number and it's displayed in there. And then the nightly sync, you know, takes place and the section number is no longer visible to him. Do you guys know of a way where you could always expose the section number? Joel, it's, it's your lucky day because 997 <laughs> was just released today and that is actually fixed in 997. So you, I, I know exactly what you're talking about where we would have a list of mathematics that would all say the same thing for the class. But with 997, you do get that course number back in your list of classes. And he's already commented with great. That's awesome. We're <laughs> happy. Hey, we made one person's day today. That's yeah, great. If somebody didn't ask that, we were probably going to mention it at some point here. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Um, so Amanda has a little bit of concern here because she really hasn't touched an Apple School Manager at all. Does she need to recreate everything in Apple School Manager uh, before importing anything? And with that said, she does have some classes already in Jamf Pro. How are those going to be affected? So the the courses that you already have in Jamf Pro can they can still be used, but the the best case scenario is going to be that you recreate those in Apple School Manager and import those in. It, it really comes down to how you're how, how you are integrating because the reason we have this middle connection with Apple School Manager now the, is because it can integrate with uh, SISs. So that way you already have your classroom information in SIS. You're bringing it into Apple School Manager. Since it's there, you might as well bring it into the JSS. Uh, if you're in a scenario that you already have your classes in Jamf Pro ready to go, uh, and I apologize, I just realized I've been saying JSS a few times, <laughs> Jamf Pro. We're learning. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, so if, if you already have classes set up in Jamf Pro and, you're, and you want to continue to use those, you don't have to bring in classes from Apple School Manager. Yeah, um, so that would basically go, if, if you wanted to have a more detailed discussion on yeah. if you needed managed Apple IDs for any of that, you can definitely hit us up at support and we can make sure we figure out the best option for you. All right, so Isla asks, kind of looking for some best practices regarding how people are syncing class informations and rosters. Are they doing it through uses of, you know, some sort of blank field in LDAP, or is there a particular SAS that they're using? You know, it, what have you guys heard from most of your customers as far as bringing in class information? 
So a lot of a lot of my customers, I've got a few here and there that are using direct SIS integration with Apple School Manager. But for the most part, my customers have been utilizing either creating those uh, SFTP CSV uploads manually um, or they're actually working with their SIS provider to get all that information basically spit out automatically. Um, so really the, the SFTP server uploads have, have been the most popular. Now that being said, I, you know, I do have some customers that have, have skipped Apple School Manager altogether and we're using the direct SIS importer plugin into Jamf Pro and just using cl classes that way. So it all depends on, on your environment and the need for managed Apple IDs. Cool. Uh, Sean asks, uh, do devices need to be supervised in Jamf Pro? And I, I believe Sean's question is relating to using Apple Classroom technologies. Uh, the student devices need to be supervised. The teacher device does not need to be supervised, but will need to be enrolled and, with, and uh, within a class. Either the device being in the class as a group or the teacher user that's assigned to the device in Jamf Pro in that class. Uh, so, uh, long uh, back to the long story short, uh, student device supervised, teacher device, no. Great. So, Matthew asks, you know, if students are not currently in classes, what would occur if you enable that Apple Education Support Profile? So, if there's no classes set up, uh, you're not going to get an EDU profile sent out. So, when you enable Apple Education Support Jamf Pro actually does some background processes and says, you know, hey, who's in this class? Okay, this person's in this class. Which device are they attached to? If you don't have anybody in any classes, then, then Jamf Pro doesn't have any EDU profiles to send out. And really, if you don't have anything set up and you want to check that box, you can if you still want to set up shared iPad and all that. Um, but the the damages, or I, I can't really say damages, but the load that was put on your server previously when that first came out has been drastically reduced. So I'm comfortable telling any customer if they want to check that box, they can go ahead and do it. As a follow-up question to that, I'm sorry, Tyrone. No, uh, so let's say Matthew did do that and he's got that enabled and later he does import his classes. Would that then sync everything up appropriately? That would then automatically kick out the uh, EDU profile to those that fit the... The, the docket for having everything on there. Wonderful. Um, okay, so some of the questions now I think we've, we've gone over a little bit. Um, I, I do want to touch on Chris's question because it's, it's important. So Chris has existing classes already imported from one system. He, he wants to go through and do the same thing in Apple School Manager. Is he going to have some duplication here or what's going to happen with those existing classes? Really, what you're going to want to do is try to bring them all into Apple School Manager. So just make it a one-stop one thing. Because okay. really, when you have those classes in your Apple School Manager instance, easily you can remove those classes in bulk from Jamf Pro and re-upload them whenever you like. So it, it makes it a lot easier if you're looking at starting with app, uh, the integration of Apple School Manager and class creation to just, just bring it all under one umbrella. Um, and, and I just see that Chris has a follow-up, which I think is important. So if he wants to purge existing classes, is there a mass way to do that? Yes. Uh, contact support, I do have a script that can uh, remove out all classes in bulk. Wonderful. Um, cool. So, sorry guys, I lost my place here. Um, so when electing to use Apple School Manager to import classes, is it possible for teachers to view student names or usernames of the class rosters when they're using Apple Classroom? Um, this was something that they could do in Casper Focus, um, and I, I, she's looking to see, excuse me, Tim is looking to see if that's also possible when you're using uh, Apple Classroom. So it's, it has to do with how the user is set up in the JSS. Uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, it's the username that gets displayed there. Correct. So the username in the JSS is what gets displayed in the classroom app. Uh, so that's where if you if you wanted that to display in there, you can adjust the usernames in the JSS. Uh, if there if there's stuff that's been imported from Apple School Manager, it might be a little more tricky depending on how those were created over there. Uh, the usernames were created. That might be something that you could contact support and. Uh, it could be a case-by-case -case scenario that we can work something out to help you out there. 
Cool. So let's see here. So uh, another question from Chris. He was talking about the different naming conventions you might want to use when you're making those Apple IDs. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like their school has different identification numbers. It's a, a letter number combination. Would that be a possible thing that he could utilize? So what I've run into with those, Chris, mm -hmm. is for customers who have who have that in the naming convention, more than likely the email addresses also contain that same naming convention. That seems to be the case in his example. So one of the options in Apple School Manager for the managed Apple ID is you can use the username of the email address before at. So for customers that have seen that or are running into that, because Apple doesn't let us really have too much granular control over managed Apple ID creation, in most cases that that um, solves the issue right there is using that as the, the managed Apple ID username because if that's the same naming throughout, we'll just we'll use it from the email address. Cool. Um, just so, so everyone knows, we have about 10 minutes left. We're doing great on questions. If you guys have more, please continue to submit them. Um, I think we are going to be able to circle back to some of the questions that were you know, off of the primary topics of today. So for those of you that are waiting patiently, I appreciate it. Hang in there. Um, you know, Ruben asks, you know, his, his particular SAS is not supported. I'm guessing that is either with, either with our product or with Apple School Manager. Um, would you recommend that he manually creates the classes in Apple School Manager or use the SAS importer? Even if your SAS isn't, in, isn't supported, I still wouldn't manually create those classes in Apple School Manager. You can use the SFTP uploads where you would make six different uh, CSV files for that information. And that's something if you go to your setup assistant in Apple School Manager, you'd be able to take a look at those templates in there and see what information it's looking for. Um, but that would more than likely be your easiest way of getting all those classes in there. Cool. Um, Sid was looking for some clarification on when you need to define users uh, in Jamf Pro uh, and whether that, how that relates to shared iPad. Um, I was just reading this question there as well, yeah. guys. Uh, would you be able to respond to that one here? I can show it to you as well, Matt. So if I understand this correctly, um, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure how, how we said it, but the shared, a shared iPad, a, a regular iPad needs to be assigned to a student in Jamf. The reason it needs to be is so that it um, so that it knows that device is in the class because the student is in the class. Uh, a shared iPad does not have to be assigned to the student because anyone can log in with that. Your user your users do have to have been imported from Apple School Manager though at the, at that point, and you need that device in the class. It's something you're going to have to manually add into the class. Uh, it's a device group. And again, if, it, if you have questions about that, uh, contacting support might be the best. But it's a device group that you add to it to get the device in the class. So to add on to that, for shared iPads, if, if that shared iPad is in this DEP token that all your Apple School Manager users are in, any managed Apple ID in that Apple School Manager instance is going to be able to log into that shared iPad. Jamf Pro has no bearings over any of the users that can log into a shared iPad. That authentication goes strictly through Apple. So that's all on your Apple School Manager when logging into a shared iPad. Cool, thanks guys. Um, one last follow-up question from Chris. I believe this is in regards to the mass deletion of, of the, the classes he might already have. Um, he, you mentioned the script solution. He was curious if that will be faster than his previous experience with the SIS importer. He has a lot of classes and that has taken um, days in some cases. Uh, and he, he wanted to just kind of get an ex expectation. Yeah, a it, it should be a lot quicker, Chris. And honestly, I feel more comfortable in it because I, I hate to recommend using a product that's used to create classes in Jamf Pro to be used to delete, delete them. them. So yeah, I could see that. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to have a chance here to circle back to some earlier questions that, that were a little different topic. Uh, one question that Ruben had was regarding managing Apple TVs. And actually, before I even get into this, uh, we prepared for questions on the topics presented. So bear with us if, if it takes us a little bit longer to answer some of these other questions. But we do want to, you know, we have extra time, so we're going to do it. Um, anyway, getting back to Ruben's question, is there a good way to manage Apple TVs through Jamf Pro? 
So really right now, Apple limits what we can do for managing Apple TVs. So really no MDM provider can manage them such as you know, sending out restrictions to them or configurations to them. Really what we can do is is enroll them into Jamf Pro and I believe send out just a wi wireless to them is really all that we have the capability right now. But that's that's something that's strictly dictated through Apple. One of, one of the main reasons that I see that customers uh, put Apple TVs into their Jamf Pro is so that they can assign them to specific iPads to say that this is one that I want to be available for AirPlay. Um, that's really the, the limited functionality that we have. And again, that's, it's in the Jamf Pro just for that inventory purposes. Cool, but hopefully something Apple will, will yeah. give more control over. Definitely. Wonderful. Um, so Lloyd also had a question regarding um, how, what we're able to manage with Jamf Pro. Are we able to manage both devices and apps? And, and it's a pretty broad question, but if you guys could kind of try and you know short tackle that in a you know concise time frame. Did you say with Jamf Pro? Uh, yes, with yeah. Jamf Pro. And uh, I, he had a follow-up question with that. When managing apps and devices, or if, if we're able to do that, how does the, the cloud solution play into or not play into that? It's a pretty broad question. Yeah. So really, okay. you know, Jamf Pro, manage your devices in terms of configuration sent to them, restrictions sent to them, um, and also the apps that you want sent to them. So really, we, we integrate strongly with the volume purchase program in terms of having control over the licenses being deployed to your devices, who you want to have, which VPP app, if you want to take that app from somebody and reassign it without having to pay for more. Um, and really, in terms of having that with the cloud, you know, you've got that access to your Jamf Pro server no matter where you're at. So if your devices are outside of your internal network, it doesn't matter because your, your Jamf Pro server is sitting out in the cloud where your devices are always going to be able to reach out to it. Um, so really, you know, if, if you want to get into more depth about that, I definitely recommend hitting up support and we can talk about that. I'd like to add too that uh, a, a lot of people that a, a lot of customers I see that go to the cloud enjoy it because they have really locked down networks that they can't necessarily open all this traffic going in and out to be able to make an externally facing uh, Jamf Pro. So having it in the cloud takes that off of their hands. They don't have to they don't have to now work with a network team and a security team and trying to get everything figured out to to open the network up for that accessibility. Cool. Uh, Peter had a couple questions. The first one was, you know, right now uh, he, he's looking to be able to import not only classes, but looking at maybe school and grade level information. I, I know this is obviously a feature situation and, and yes. from a support standpoint, we have some visibility, not total visibility, but could either of you guys speak to, to that potential idea? Uh, so we, this is definitely something that a lot of people have been requesting. And it comes down, right now, it comes down to uh, the availability from Apple School Manager. We actually just got done kind of reviewing this over to see what was available to grab from Apple School Manager. And some, uh, some of that information isn't available to us. Uh, so currently, right now, we couldn't program something to be able to grab that. But it could be a hand-in-hand -hand thing where Apple... Uh, enables that feature and then maybe we enable that feature right after that. So basically what it comes down to is we're limited by the keys that Apple sends to your Jamf Pro server. Um, so until they can send those keys for the values for those, we, we can't collect them. And it looks like Peter's, you know, he's making sure he's covering his bases because he's talked to Apple about that, that feature oh, as well. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I figure the more, the more people that can talk to Apple about features and uh, definitely feature requests with Apple, feature requests with us. More sure. people that want to do that, the better. Yep. Gets things done. Yep. Yeah, and we all, we all grow. Yep. Um, uh, one last question here and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, so Antonio asked that PowerSchool isn't currently supported in Apple School Manager. Uh, what do you recommend to upload PowerSchool to Apple School Manager besides SFJP, or is that the only option, and, and do you think PowerSchool might be supported in the future? So the SFTP really is your only other option other than your manual class creation. 
Um, I know there's a lot of customers that use PowerSchool, so I, I can't imagine Apple would not integrate with them in Apple School Manager. But that it, being, it is happening. It, it was is. in that, that email we received. It's the next one to come. Uh, there's only there's only for sure they only know of two more, and PowerSchool was one of them. Uh, they just don't know when. Ellen, that's one of the things too that that Ty mentioned. You know, some of these SIS companies are saying, "Well, let's not wait for Apple School Manager to integrate with us. Let's go ahead and try to find a way to integrate with them." Smart. So I would check to see if if PowerSchool has ways of exporting these six CSV files that you need for the SFTP upload, because honestly, that might be your better way of going. Yeah, cool. Sure. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for attending. We hope this was informational and educational. Uh, we will be, you know, doing the web editing and getting this recording up uh, at some point through our marketing team. I, I can't give you a direct timeline on that, but, you know, we'll make sure it happens in as, as timely a manner as we possibly can. Uh, if you didn't have your question answered, I think I got them all, but if I did miss one, uh, please just email support at jampsoftware.com. We'll be happy to answer it. Uh, I also would be happy to, you know, if we want to start a Jamf Nation discussion on this topic, you'd be more than welcome to do that as well. Um, yeah, thank you for attending. You guys have a great day.